Farm. We're here today on the Jenny Hamlington Memorial Match, which is split over Extension Pool, House, Canal, Jenny's and also High Pool. I think there's 60 odd anglers here, so it's a good match today. For anyone who doesn't know, obviously Mike and Jenny Hamlington, they were the original owners of this venue. Obviously Mike still runs the fishery along with his daughter Sarah. And unfortunately, obviously Jenny passed away. So every year to celebrate her life, they run a match on here and everyone comes down and tries to support it. So I've decided to come down and film a live match today. Obviously, Tunnel Barn's been fishing really well this year, so hopefully we'll get plenty of bites and it'll be a brilliant day and a brilliant event for everyone concerned. So in terms of my fishing, I'm on 19 on extension today. Now, looking at the peg, I've got plenty of room. It's down the windward end of the lake, so I do fancy it for some bites. Not really sure what sort of weight we're going to be fishing for today. Obviously, Tunnel Barn could be fishing for a really big weight might be a slightly harder day it is a little bit cooler than it has been the last few uh, weeks so i'm not 100 percent sure plan wise i'm thinking shallow fishing i've got a nice pot in front of me to fish up to the only thing i would say about that is i am actually sharing it with the angler opposite so i'm not 100 percent sure how good that's going to be but i'm going to feed it this left hand edge i've got a long channel here which i really fancy to get a few bites down here so i've got a nice left hand edge plenty of reeds got some depth there so maybe shallow down the edge maybe on the bottom down the edge there as well and then I've also got a lovely right hand edge under a tree there which is some nice shallow water to fish with pellets or maybe ground bait and maggots but the main target's going to be probably plenty of little stocky f1s but hopefully also some of the real big old f1s just heard a fish top there down the edge so hopefully there's a few here and I'm going to have a good day so follow me through the match I'm going to talk through the bait and the rigs next going to keep it nice and simple uh, I'll go on to that next. Hopefully you'll enjoy the video. Right, so I'm just going to run through the bait that I'm going to use today. Obviously on extension pool today, we're mainly fishing for sort of F1s. There is a few smaller stockies that have gone in, but mainly we're trying to target these big F1s. So bait, I'm looking at the day and I'm thinking, I've got a little bit of room here, the wind's down. I'm hoping to catch a lot of fish shallow. So main baits are going to be casters and maggots. So firstly, sort of my casters. These are just some I've got left over from um, the weekend. I went to Westwood Lakes at the weekend. So these are nice big casters still from Adlington. I've got a fair few pints of them for fishing shallow. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to do yet. I might feed it both out towards the pot and down the edge, but I might feed maggots down the edge. So I'm a bit like this at the minute. I'm a bit undecided, but we might swap and change through the day and see what's best. So like I say, fair few pints of casters for shallow. And then, like I say, I've got some maggots. Again, I've got some old ones from the weekend. I did buy a few more pints of fresh ones today from the shop here. I've got mainly whites with a few reds in. Again, these might be getting used for chucking down the edge. I also might throw them short if I'm struggling for bites and I feel like I need to fish and just get some bites on the bottom. But mainly, I reckon what I'm going to be using these for today is on the hook. So white maggots and a few reds. The next baits is obviously going to be for this down the edge line. I've got a lovely edge, to be fair, to me right here towards this tree. It plums up pretty shallow, just under two foot. So I'm imagining I can get away with ground bait and micros. The micros are obviously just a fishery micros. They're a Screttins micro. And I've left them pretty dry initially today. Now, I expect if I'm getting a few bites down there, I'll have a few, quite a few fish in my peg, sort of stockies. I'll be getting a few indications. Just leaving them dry like this, it just gives me the option of sort of keeping them sort of hard and keeping the fish down on the bottom if I'm getting a lot of liners. So I've just decided to leave them pretty dry. So basically with them, just tip some water on them, give them 30 seconds and drain them straight off. Can always dampen them down more if I need to through the day, but I've just left them to begin with pretty dry. So I've just got one bag of them. We'll have a spare bag as well in case I'm catching a lot of fish on pellets, but I imagine that should do us plenty. And then I've just got me old faithful Blake's pole mixed ground bait. Just mixed a kilo of that up today. Again, if I start on micro pellets and I'm not getting a reaction, I can always feed a bit of this. And also if later in the match, I feel like I want to target some bigger fish, a few carp, I can also big pot it down this edge as well and try and target the carp. So that's just mixed up as, as normal. So a sort of kilo of ground bait, I've added two pints of water to it. Creates a nice fluffy mix, not massively over wet, but just nice and damp where it's going to sink again. That's a good starting point, but if I need to dampen it down later in the session, I can just add a little bit of water to that and fine tune it through the day. And then the final bait I've got actually is I've just got a few formal expanders. So when I'm fishing with my micros early on, 
nice formula expander over the top is going to be the perfect hook bait to hopefully get me off to a good start in the match. Don't imagine I'm going to fish them all day. Probably will swap to fishing other baits like maggots on the hook. But just initially, for them first few fish, we've got a few formal expanders. That's basically the bait for today. Nice and simple. Obviously, you need plenty of it when you come to these sort of venues. I imagine we are going to feed a fair few, catch a few fish shallow. So I bought, you know, plenty of both. So I've, I've probably got enough to fish the match, either mainly maggots or mainly casters, depending on what... Um, is the best approach on the day so i've got both fingers crossed we'll get a few bites on him so rigs i've got quite a few rigs for today i've got sort of nine or ten rigs i think nine rigs but basically most of them are shallow rigs i'm going to quite try and keep the actual match pretty simple so i'm going to have basically i'm going to have a line across to the pot shallow i'm going to have a line down my left hand edge probably shallow but also i've got a deck rig for that as well and then I've got this edge here, which is nice and shallow, sort of just under two foot, where I'm going to be fishing on the bottom with pellets or ground bait and maggots. So really, I've only really got three areas of the peg that I'm anticipating on fishing. So starting with the rig for the right hand edge, which is where I'm thinking I'm going to start the match. I've got grey hydro. All of my deck rigs today, I've got grey hydro in a short kit. Now, that's nice and simple. It's just... A nice soft elastic where I can up the fish and they'll swim out the peg, but also not too soft that I'm not being able to get on with the fishing and just pull one puller out the puller and net the F1s. It's really important you don't fish too light at this time of the year, otherwise you just play fish all day. Some of it's nice and strong, but also soft enough to not bump fish. Like I say, that's through a short kit. The main line on all my rigs today is 017. Pretty much all my F1 fishing is done with 017 main line. Got a nice short line between float and pole. I've got a bit of a tree here i've got a few overhanging sort of like leaves there where i need to be able to tuck my rig underneath it so i've got sort of eight to ten inch line between float and pole i could even shorten that down to four inch if needs be but that's just a nice starting point a couple of number eight back shot halfway between the float to point four muddy the only float i ever use for fishing two foot and lesser water absolutely perfect for that nice and positive so when i've got a few fish in my peg everything stays nice and stable running down to just the bulk of number eight stops with a three inch 013 up length and a 16 super lwg for either fishing an expander or three or four white maggots on the hook so that's basically my edge rig the next rig is going to be for the left edge so i basically even though i'm anticipating on catching most of my fish shallow down there it is a bit cooler today so maybe they will actually stay on the deck so i have got a, a deck rig set up it's around three foot deep down there Again, I've got grey hydro through a short kit. Shortish line, 8 or 10 inch line. Two back shot halfway between. This one, because it's a little bit deeper, around 3 foot, I've gone for a longer float, 4 by 12 Maggie. Just be nice for fishing either maggots or casters down there. And like I say, it's about 3 foot deep. So moving down to the shotting pattern, I've just got a bulk 9 or 10 inches away from the hook. There, number 9, stops again. And then I've just got one number 9 dropper above my 3 inch hook length. And again, 013 to a size 16 Super LWG. Now, if there's a lot of fish down there, I'm getting a lot of signs. The nice thing about using stops on this rig is I can just pull it all down to the hook length. But if there's a few fish sort of just sat off the bottom and they're watching the bait fall, that bulk and one dropper just gives me the chance to catch a few fish on the drop with obviously the carbon stem float and the 4 by 12 um, size. So that's my second rig. And they're my main two rigs for fishing on the bottom today. Now... I don't plan on fishing any other rigs on the bottom, but I have quickly set up as well a short rig for fishing in case I need to to get some bites. Down the middle here today, it's about three and a half foot. It's quite shallow here. I know it does narrow up here a little bit, so I presume this is the shallower end of the lake. So it might actually be quite good fishing on the bottom with maggots, but I'm only going to do that if I need to. So again, grey hydro elastic, short line again, 10 inch long, 4x14 Maggie float, just for that little bit deeper, three and a half foot of water. I'm running on down to the bulk. The bulk's a little bit higher on this rig, sort of 11 inches from the hook. They're number eight, and I've just got one number nine dropper above a four inch hook length. 013 again, 16 Super LWG. So this is basically a maggot short rig if I need to, to just get some bites, catch some skimmers maybe and a few stockies if it's a bit difficult middle of the match. And now literally the rest of the rigs now are shallow rigs. So I'm hoping to spend most of the day shallow. I've got 
quite a bit of space. The wind's blowing down. There should be quite a few F1s here, fingers crossed. So plenty of shallow rigs. Now the first two what I'm going to talk about are my standard Fitch rigs. Slightly softer elastic on this, white hydro. When I'm fishing shallow, I just like that so that the fish can swim out the peg nice and uh, gradually. You don't want anything where you hook them and they're splashing off or anything like that. So white hydro, 017 mainline again. Couple of little back shot, just to, cause there's a bit of wind on today, just to sort of stop that line picking up any sort of wind and blowing me float out of position. I've got a little Richie Wilson dibber, that's the number three version. Again, there is a little bit of wind on. Everywhere I've been going lately, it's been a little bit windy. So I've just gone for an, a little bit of a bigger dibber just to keep it nice and stable. And I've just got two number 10 shot with a short little two inch hook length. And again, 16 Super LWG. And I've got bands on them at the minute because I am anticipating fishing casters, but I might have to swap them to a straight hook for fishing maggots later on. And this rig's basically going to be for fishing anywhere from six inch, which is the minimum depth, up to maybe 16, 18 inch, this little dibber float. So that's the first shallow rig. Now moving on to the second rig, I've got a rig for fishing a little bit deeper. So I don't anticipate, with it only being three and a half foot today, I don't anticipate catching much deeper than maybe 20 inches at a push. So just if I'm fishing more in and around 18, 20 inch, just a bit of a longer float might be better. So white hydro elastic, I've got two back shot again. And this is a little prototype float from Richie Wilson. It's actually a short 4B8 or 3B8 winter maggot. Something he's going to bring out shortly, just as a bit of a deeper shallow float. So it's just something I've been trying. So little 3B8 winter maggie. Coming down to the shotting pattern, that's just got three number 12 shot strung out in the bottom part of the rig. Three inch hook length, again 013, 16 Super LWG. So just for fishing a little bit deeper, slightly longer float if the fish is sat a bit deeper. And now all the rest of the rigs are basically my overshotted rigs. Now at Tunnel Barn, you're allowed to overshot your float. You've still got to have a four inch line between float and pole, but you can overshot your float. So it's really important that when it's allowed that you do set them up because it can be deadly on the, on the right day. So the first one is the shortest rig I'm allowed to use at Tunnel Barn. So basically it's 10 inches long now. That's basically six inches deep and a four inch line between float and pole. I've got white hydro again, 017, a little Richie Wilson number one dibber, five number 10 stops, a little short three inch hook length on this one, 16 Super LWG. And basically what this does is it just sinks. And if I've got a fish tight to the cover or sort of under the cover down this edge here and push it right in, it just makes it easier to pull your rig in position. And obviously when you get a bite, it just pulls the elastic out. Really, really important when you're fishing for F1s that you do set some of these up if allowed. So that's 10 inches deep. And then I've just staggered my depths as I'm going deeper. So that's the shortest one I can use. I've got one for 12 inches. Again, exactly the same, four inch line, little number one dibber, five number 10s, short up length just for fishing a little bit deeper. And then I've got 15 inches and also 18 inches overshotted rigs as well. And that is basically all the rigs that I've got for today. Now, it looks like a lot, but obviously when you're shallow fishing, you just got to cover your depths a little bit. So uh, six shallow rigs, three fit rigs fishing on the bottom. Hopefully we'll have a nice day and we'll, you know, hopefully catch most of them shallow, but we'll see what happens through the day. Right, so there's the all in. I'm just gonna start feeding me, me two shallow lines. I'm just gonna start loose feeding a few casters to this plant pot in front of me. And I'm just gonna throw a few casters in this edge. Now, as I've said, I'm not 100% sure whether maggots or casters are gonna be better today. So I might fish a combination of both. But initially I'm just gonna feed casters. Normally think if you can catch on casters, you normally catch bigger fish and then hopefully bigger weight. So that's the plan. And if needs be, I can always swap to maggots. So I'm gonna start in this right edge, little small cut down medium guru pot of micro pellets. There's only two foot of water down there. So just gonna feed micros initially. And if I don't get any fish coming in, I can always change and start fishing with, you know, other baits, ground bait. If I get a lot of fish coming in, 
I can always, oh there you go, I've got a bike straight away. Literally went straight, straight under, so it's a good start. It's on micros. But what I was saying is I can always, if I'm getting a lot of bites, swap to fish in with just loose fed bait as well. So I could even just throw maggots or casters there as well. So, nice start. F1 about a pound, hook nicely. Gonna pop him in. Now I've gotta be careful of my net limits today. Now the net limit on here, 60 pound. If you're over 65 pound though, you actually lose your whole net. So don't wanna, actually it might be 65 the net limit and 70 pound if you go over. So I'm just gonna be careful. I'm only gonna go to about 45 in each net. So keep some bait going in. Loose feed a few in the edge. Pour a ship out. Loose feed some to the pot. More than anything now, obviously, I want to have a good start in this edge, but I want to set me peg up for the rest of the match. I'm going to pop my micros in. Lift it into place. Oh, indication straight away. So that's a really good sign for, obviously, fish coming to bait straight away. Obviously, I could have started across today. I've got a nice island. It's a similar sort of depth to this. The problem with that... I always think in the summertime when there's a lot of fish feeding, you're going, you know, to your furthest point straight away, you're making it hard for yourself. Whereas if I can catch nice and short, get a few bites, it also makes it easier for me to feed me other lines. So it's always a good tip. If you expect the fishing to be quite good, you know, summertime, if you come to these sort of venues where it's absolutely stuffed full of F1s, Start a bit short, start in the edge, start short, and you can always work your way out. I'm gonna keep firing them casters out on me line to the pot. Now, you see that last chuck, I went in, got a bite straight away. This chuck went in and missed an indication straight away. Now, if that's the case, I might need to feed a little bit more at a time to hold the fish. If I'm getting a bite straight away and then I don't get any more indications, obviously the fish are coming in, eating the bait, disturbing it pretty quick. Might be a case of just increasing the size. So I've started on a cut down medium pot of micros. I might need to feed them full medium just to keep enough bait in the peg. So see what happens. Gonna keep not loose feeding loads and loads of casters, just sort of 20 casters, nice and steady. Just gonna come back because I had an indication pretty quick. Just gonna come back and refeed. Again, don't forget about your other line, so just before I ship in. 15 or 20 casters twice down that edge. Just close them mic in a little bit too hard that time. I've also, I'm gonna get me excuses in early about this right hand edge line. I've got Thomas stood right over it at the minute. Don't know whether that's going to affect it. Obviously it helps if obviously you can obviously see that float nice and tight up. I've had a bite pretty quick, so hopefully. There you go. Like a little stocky again. But initially, all I want to do now is keep feeding me lines and put an odd fish in my net. Now, later on in the session, we should hopefully start to catch a few better fish. It's actually a little mirror cart, that. Lovely little mirror. Should hopefully catch a few better fish, but initially, while I build my shallow lines up, just be happy to put anything I can in the net. again. 
loose bead, view in the edge. Small little pot of micras. Loose bead a few out shallow. Now you'll what you'll see is I'm regularly feeding my swims. Now, when you come to a venue like Tunnel Barn, a lot of fish in here. Fish for decent weight to fish. You need to keep a little bit of bait dropping in all over your swim. Now, what that allows you to do, every time one of your other lines dries up, oh, bite straight away. Every time one of your other lines dries up, just means you've got somewhere else to drop in. If you don't feed enough lines and don't give yourself somewhere to drop in. Another little stocky. If you don't give yourself somewhere to drop in, you can often have little areas of the day where you're struggling. You're having you know, a little dry patch in the match now. By feeding all your lines, keeping everything on the go, you've always got somewhere to go in. It just means, hopefully, you should catch for the majority of the five hours instead of, you know, having, you know, an hour or two that's pretty dry. So, just got three swims on the go at the minute. I may have to open, you know, that magnet line up. I could always open the across line up if I'm struggling. But I'm hoping one of these three lines will work well. Again, I'm going to feed me a little pot of micras. Get me rig on it. Now, a lot of them stocky fish, what we're catching, have gone in over the winter. Now, I'm sure we're going to get plenty of bites off them today. If we're going to have a really good day and we're going to, you know, frame in the match, I imagine we're going to have to catch some of these bigger, older F1s, which there are a lot of. Again, just a small fish. Yeah, we're going to have to catch a few of them bigger, older F1s. Now, I expect to catch the majority of them up in the water. So, every time you open the water lines, dry up, I imagine I'll need to use this edge just as something to nick a few bites off. I might even get a few bigger fish there later on in the match. But at the minute, I just want to build my shallow lines up. And that's a really good tip if you, you know, you're expecting to catch shallow. Don't just rush straight in on it. Give it a bit of time. Started at 11 o'clock today now. I wouldn't imagine I'll be going in on this shallow line till at least half past. And if I can just put a weight of stockies in my net early, it's just adding that little bit of extra weight at the end of the match. If I rush in shallow, it might take me you know, 20 minutes, half an hour to get my first bite anyway, so you're better off just putting a few of these stockies in the net. And then let them bigger fish naturally come on the feed later on in the session. See a little sign on my float then. Don't strike at any little bites like that. Wait till you get positive bite. just see here where I've chosen to fish just a few sort of six inches away from the bank now tight to the bank there's actually a lot of roots there and it also jumps up quite steep comes up a little bit shallower there whereas where I'm actually fishing there it's lovely and flat got a nice hard bottom feels like quite a nice smooth area to fish just allows me to get that trap set that little pot of micro pellets we hook bait right in the middle of it And hopefully then when a fish comes in your peg, if it's nice and clean, you don't get liners, you don't get, you know, foul up fish. Everything should be just lovely and clean. Now, again, it seems like, again, if I'm getting a bite here, it's going really fast. And that's telling me I feel like I need to up my feed. Now, I'm not going to rush into it. Don't want to create a peg that's messy and I'm getting foul up fish, but... 
within the next few feeds, if that's, you know, I still get that same response, I am 100% going to step up to my medium pot, just hold, you know, another third of the same again in micros, just should hopefully hold the fish there a little bit better. So, just hold that bait right over the marker, right over that little pile of bait. I feel like my trap's still set, me, me, some bait on the bottom. Keep loose feeding me casters. So, and I'm just going to give it a few more seconds. Don't get one, just going to come back. Fill that pot up again. actually up a little bit of a root there this is something what I was just mentioning so if I find that's the case I can always just come away from the bank a little bit more maybe a fish has just literally pulled that rig a little bit too tight to the bank again before you ship out loose feed a bit of bait in the edge Loose feed a bit of bait out to the pot. Just going to feed the micro pellet. There you go. See how they literally come straight in your peg? It's normally the case with these smaller newer stocky fish they do rush in quite quick now that sort of stamp if i can catch them pretty consistently i'll have a good weight they're the sort of stamp that you want to be catching them smaller stockies obviously not ideal still reckon i've got around three pound already and i've not been fishing long so still put a few fish in the net now feel like a few better fish will turn up on this line later on in the day Here, don't force it if you're not if you're not catching decent fish straight away don't feel like you have to really push your peg let the fish naturally push in you know find the bait and then once them better fish turn up normally they stay there so It's a lovely bite that. So, shall I get a second? Just fire me baiting. See how that grey hydro, it's not overly severe for catching them fish, but again, you can land them without having to use the puller kit. Nice and efficient. Just plop the fish in the net. Loose feed in then. Casters in the edge. A few micro pellets. And it's just a case of just getting into that little ribbon. Don't forget, you know, even though I'm getting some bites down that edge, don't forget to feed your lines. Take that little bit extra time to get your lines primed up. It will make a big difference come the end of the day. Get your rig on your bait nice and quick. Hold it right on that little shelf, what we've got there. Ooh, yeah, I'll give that a bit too big a strike then. 
But you see how quick them fish are coming to that bait. I'm going to set my trap again. straight on it. The only problem here today, obviously, I can't really see anyone else. I can see the obviously the anger opposite me. But because of this tree here, I can't actually see anyone else. So I'm just going to have to go off what I'm catching so as how I feel like the lake's fishing and what's working. Sometimes you can use other anglers, especially like the local anglers who know the venue really well. It's a bit of a marker as to how you should be approaching your peg. I haven't got that today. So what I may have to do is just a little liner then. I have to do is just try and gauge it as best I can. So at the minute, I personally expect it to be a relatively slow start so I'm just getting a few little indications a relatively slow start and it'll just build up through the day so just keep feeding all my swims when I was coming on the pole masters it's about a month ago now it seemed like early in the day fish didn't really want to feed there's an odd fish sort of cruising about. The conditions aren't quite like that, but it seemed like you'd catch a few smaller fish early, maybe a few perch and skimmers and stuff on worms, and then it just progressively gets stronger. And I'm hoping that's what's going to happen today. See that swirl, Tom? Obviously a better fish is coming. So what I'm going to do... 
we've just had a couple of feeds then and I've not had an indication so like I touched on maybe I need to up my feed so I'm just gonna switch to my large pot sorry my medium pot just that little bit bigger and ho hopefully now you should get a bit of a better response now just actually seeing last chuck an indication of a bigger fish in my peg now hopefully that means there is an odd one starting to come and have a look but i might just need to feed that little bit more bait in order to hold the fish there so i've just seen my first sign of a fish down that left edge where i've been loose feeding the casters as well so fingers crossed things are starting to liven up See straight away that little bit more bait. I don't ever like to go in really positive and loads of bait straight away, especially when you're fishing on these sort of venues, because if a lot of fish come rushing in your peg straight away, you put a lot of bait in, you can get it very messy. Whereas by starting off a little bit on the back foot and then just slowly increasing it, you normally just build your peg nicely like this feels like a little bit of a better f1 these are the fish that we're targeting say these average a pound and a half to sort of two and a half pound on this lake so the weight that i expect to need today i'm probably going to need maybe 80 fish a mixture of obviously the stockies and a fair few of these slightly better ones that's probably getting on for two pound hook nicely in the top lip catch any of these better fish just make sure you pop them in your net with the net obviously the smaller stockies are quite difficult to put back with the net so i'm just going to drop them in gently but any of them better fish make sure you just look after them and just pop them in with the net keep feeding my lines and yeah for now i think that's pretty much what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this pellet swim. Catch what I can. And then maybe I'll catch up with you in sort of 20 minutes, half an hour's time when I'm on my shallow swim. Let's have one last chuck in this edge. And see, see how we get on. So, I had that decent spell down the edge and I've probably got to, we're about an hour in and I've probably got to about 20 pound down there. They just seem to have started to slow up. So I've just come off it. I'm gonna keep feeding a few pellets down there. Keep a few fish in the area. But what's interesting is I've gone shallow and I've only actually caught a couple of little stockies. now. I still expect this to start to get better as the day goes on but initially it's not been amazing so maybe what I'm going to need to do is just skip about a little bit more so it might be a case of you know drop in shallow catch what I can out here have a go in the edge shallow have a go on the bottom in the edge to my left drop back in on micro pellets in the edge and just try and keep something dropping in the net and then hopefully some stage of the day I should have a good arrival now straight away what I noticed when I was fishing oh there's one just as I was saying I wasn't catching shallow it's, it's gone so hopefully I've moaned them on now that looks like a reasonable f1 as well now what I was going to say is um, what I noticed straight away is I went in on my standard fixed dibber but the actual reeds on the on the little pot there actually hang out a lot more than they look like they do. And it was difficult to get, just popped out in the net, difficult to get me rig 
in tight to the to the pot. So what I've decided to do straight away is pick me little overshotted rigs up. Now this one is my 12 inch one. Like I say, I've gone one slightly shallower than that, but I haven't actually seen any swirls or anything like that out shallow yet. So I don't think they're right up on my shallowest depth. So I've just dropped in at 12 inch just to start with. And I'll, I can always drop a little bit deeper. Now, when you're fishing up to cover like this, you tend to catch the fish reasonably shallow. Like I've very rarely found you catch him much deeper than sort of maybe even 14 inch at a push. I have got a slightly deeper overshotted rig down at 15 inch, which I might drop in on. But I feel like this is probably the deepest that I'm going to catch on, especially if I'm going to catch pretty well. Now, if you see there with this overshotted rig, how tight I can poke it into the cover. Now, when I was fishing my standard fitch rig, I couldn't get it anywhere near as tight as this. I think it's really important that when you're fishing up to cover like this, you can get right in amongst it. So I'm just... Keep loose feed in them casters. Keep just... What you'll notice with this overshotted rig is I keep constantly lifting and dropping the rig and like flicking it up. So if you see there, I'm just lifting it up. Looks almost like I'm trying to tap the water, but I'm not. What I'm basically doing is holding my pole on the water. Now my depth set at 12 inch and literally just lifting it up and lowering that last four inches back down, lifting it up and lowering it back down. Now what that does basically is keep that hook bait fluttering about and falling. Now, the way I always look at it, you know, if you're feeding casters, they don't just sink down to 12 inch and stop. So when you've got your pole tip still like that, it's very rare that you catch one because obviously your hook bait is looking unnatural and sat still. Whereas if you keep lifting it up, blowing it back through, keep letting that hook bait flutter in front of the fish. It always gives them a chance to just snatch at the bait. So I think that's really, really important when you're doing this style of fishing. Gonna keep up there's one keep loose feed in this and hopefully now there is an odd one starting to turn up there now when i first dropped in it wasn't very good but that last couple of chucks they've both been good f1s now it wasn't frantic it wasn't quick but even at that pace if i can keep coming back with a reasonable fish that's probably one of about a pound and a half then i'll have a reasonable weight so I'm going to say I've got about £25. We're about an hour and five, an hour and ten minutes in. So it's going all right. So again, just keep feeding me lines. I don't feel like at the minute it's going to be one of them days where I'm just going to go in and empty it all day on one line. I feel like I'm going to have to keep moving about. Keep throwing a few pellets in the edge. Keep throwing a few casters in the other edge. And keep feeding your main swim out in front. So Now... This edge line, because I've got a lot of room to me left, I, I think this edge line to me left will kick in really strong. But what I don't want to do is rush in on the line which I expect to be the best line. Now, the longer I can feed that today, I feel like the stronger it's going to be when I do actually go in on it. So if I can get a few bites out in front now and give this edge to me left a little bit longer hopefully when I drop in on it I should have a good spell one of these lines today should hopefully eventually turn out really good and really strong but at the minute I'm not there's one at the minute I'm not sure which one it's going to be so keep them fed that looks like another reasonable F1 and we'll just keep plugging away. So at the minute, we're catching at 12 inches. Keep a note of that. This is why I always mark my top kits up. I know I talk about it all the time, but the depth is so, so important with all your fishing, but particularly shallow fishing. Another one, I'm going to say, again, an older F1, but not a massive one. Pound and a half, pound and three quarters. So that's nice and steady. Roll me caster on the up.
And if I can just keep plugging away, keep nicking them fish out there, keep feeding me other lines, do really think I'm going to have a good, strong later part of the match down this left-hand edge. I have actually seen one or two signs of fish down there. But what I don't want to do is, while them first couple of fish have turned up, go in and catch them straight away. I'm going to wait until I feel like there's a number of fish down that edge to my left. Try and give it as long as I can. You see there's a nice little hole there where the duck just moved that reed. So this is where this overshotted rig's so good. I can push it right in and lower it down, lift it up and get right in amongst where the fish is sat. Now, if I was using a fixed rig, it's very, very difficult to get the rig in amongst the, the cover. You get caught up in the cover, you get tangled. It's not very effective. Whereas when you're doing this sort of fishing, I just think this overshotted rig is just nigh on unbeatable. So it's always worth having both set up. Just lift, lower it down, keep it on the move. Every now and again, just give it a couple of taps, maybe try and make a bit of noise. See if the fish will respond. Some days you'll tap and you'll get a response straight away. Other days you'll not get any response. There's one. You'll not get any response from a tap. And it's better off just leaving everything quiet and just lift and drop. So play about with that and just keep everything busy. This is the key with this F1 fishing, I think, just to keep summer happening, some bait dropping in. Another F1 about a pound. got to click that last one so I've got yeah about 27 pound now on the clicker so reasonable start I'd, I'm gonna say obviously I don't know how well the other lakes are fishing I'm not really sure how well this lake's fishing in general because I can't see many anglers but at the minute I feel like we're doing okay not gone in on this right and this left hand line yet which I am really fancying it down there. It does look lovely with a nice bit of cover and that long channel where I haven't got any anglers. So keep priming and swim. Again, see where that little hole is there in the cover. Push it in. Just lower the rig down to 12 inches. Lift it up. Lower it down. Lift it up. Lower it down. Just keep that caster falling, and there you go. You can see quite how effective this rig is. Now, when I first started this little section, I did say that it, they hadn't turned up, but it looks like now that they have. So hopefully this will keep going. And again, this feels like a reasonable F1. Yeah, nice big F1. Now, if we can catch some of them, that's probably two and a half pound. Great fish, that. They're the ones that we're after. They're the real old F1s that are in this lake. But they're the very crafty ones. They've been caught a lot of times before. And this is where things like, you know, having your overshotted rig, being able to get right into the cover where them craftier fish are hiding, just so important. So again, keep chucking some bait in the edge. Before you ship out, always loose feed a few casters. Get them fish waiting for the feed. If you rush out really quick and just go in with your rig, then obviously you get the pole out over the fish before you've drew some fish into your peg and it can it can stop them actually coming under the pole tip. Whereas if I feed before I ship out, then fish come in because there's no pole tip over their heads. They're nice and confident. And that normally just means that you can go in and get one quick. Now that hole is actually covered up a little bit. That's the only thing when you've got to watch with these ducks. They will move the cover about, so just try and get your rig where you can get it in best. Just 
keep loose being a few casters. Not going mad with the feed, just taking it nice and steady. 20 caster, regular, there you go. So, catching well now, and like you can see how effective that overshotted rig is. This one's quite angry, trying to take me around the back of the pot. A lot of people sort of frown upon this style of fishing, but when you're fishing up to cover like this, there's no other way of getting that form of presentation. Now, when you fish with a fixed rig, you get tangled, you have problems with, you know, losing rigs, losing hook lengths, getting stuck. With this, everything's really effective. You don't get stuck, you don't get tangles. Well, oh, that's a lovely big F1, that one. You just catch them nice and steadily. You get right tight to where them clever fish are. And it just makes everything a lot smoother. So when allowed, I'd always advocate, you know, fishing this way, especially when you're fishing up to cover. So lovely big F1, that's probably three pound. Now, they're the ones that we're after. them in the net now caster wise one thing I always do is just open enough for that just such short time that you're fishing so don't open all the bait for the whole day all at once and put it under water and anything like that if you do that what I tend to find happens is you get your casters stuck in your pouch and when you go to fire them out they sort of spread out a lot doing it like this which is where i just open it leave them dry it's not too warm today they're not going to turn really quick they're going to stay you know they're going to sink nicely but it just means that you can group them together better but also i find by opening a pint at a time helps you to work out roughly how much you're feeding per hour now i'm on my second pint of caster now obviously i'm feeding two lines i've got you know, only a little scraping of this second pint now, and we're getting on for sort of an hour and 20 minutes into the match, so I'm feeding quite a bit. Obviously, I'm feeding two lines with caster today. Now, obviously, if I was only feeding one line, I'd probably only need half the volume, but today, because I'm going to feed two lines, I've got plenty of casters left over, to be fair, from the weekend, so I'm making sure I'm going to try and use them up, to be fair. But caster is such a good bait on here because you can hear the noise when you fire them casters in. Makes such a big noise, you can draw a lot of fish into your peg. Still sink nice and slow, they keep the fish high in the water. So, I'd always go for fishing with casters when you can, there you go. But, I've also got some maggots as well, obviously, maggots works well for this sort of fishing. Some venues you can also fish with four mil pellets, that works well, but personally my favorite is always casters. So another little stocky, but we're catching nice and steadily now. I would say we're probably not too far off 40 pound. Like I say, we're an hour and 20 minutes in. So brilliant start. And hopefully it keeps going. Right, so we're about two hours in. Just check the time. Oh no, two and a half hours in, we're about halfway through. Now, it's been interesting really. I've had to keep rotating my swim, so early you were seeing me fishing over to the pot. I was catching well. It seems like what keeps happening is that line will fade. I'll have to drop in the edge, catch a couple there, and then that'll fade, and then I'll have to go back onto the pot and just keep rotating them now. Weight wise, I'm doing all right. I reckon I've probably got 65 pounds, so halfway through 65 pounds, not too bad. I'm doing okay now. Hopefully, I just keep feeling like all of a sudden one of my lines will kick in strong, and I'm not sure which one of them it's going to be whether it's going to be this side, it's going to be this, um, you know, the pot line, or if it's going to be down that right hand edge now i have been keep feeding that right hand edge i've not had a drop on it since i've gone shallow because i've always seemed to have been getting an odd bite shallow 
to keep me on it. Now, I'll see where I think I'm up to. And within the next half an hour, if I don't feel like these lines are coming really, really good, I will be having a look back down that edge because maybe that's going to be my best chance of having a strong run of fish. Especially with it being nice and close to me, it being a nice depth, it plumbing up well. I might actually get a really good run down there. Been feeding it regularly with pellets. And I've just been keeping feeding all my other lines, so it seems like down this edge there's an odd fish there and you go in, you have to be patient, but eventually you will get a decent F1. You seem to be able to nick a couple off it and then have to go back out on that pot, but I just can't help but feel like at some stage of the day they are going to turn up here and there's going to be a fair few there to catch. But as of yet, it hasn't got really strong, but just keep loose feeding a few casters. Another thing what I might be tempted to do soon is just have a look on the bottom down this edge as well. Now, it's only sort of three foot there and I've been loose feeding it nice and positively. There might actually be a lot of fish there on the bottom as well. I might be able to go in and actually catch pretty well on the bottom there. So I've still got a few options of what I can do. It's quite a, a funny one really because I've just been having you know, like odd runs of fish on each line. It's not nothing standing out to me of what I need to be doing. But keep just keep feeding. Now see this time I'm fishing at 12 inch at the minute and I've not had any signs this chuck so what I need to do just need to deepen my rig off. Now if I deepen this off and then don't get any more signs then it probably tells me there's none there shallow. See I just had one little sign maybe I don't need to deepen my rig off quite yet. Flick it in again. Now what you might notice is obviously when you see me fishing to that pot, I was fishing with my overshotted rig. Now I can actually get in a lot nicer down the edge and uh, I can fish with this little light fixed rig and I, I like to do that if I can because it, it allows me to read indications so I know, you know, if there's fish shallower, if there's fish deeper, I might, you know, can read that on my float whereas obviously on the overshotted rig you don't get indications you only get bites so that's where this can be really really good but you only had that one sign there so I'm just going to come back in keep feeding me edge so just feed a few pellets in me edge I'm just going to deepen my rig off by two inch so I'm at 14 inch now fire a few casters on that pot And just see how I get on. If, if I don't get any signs on this now, what I'm going to do, just out of interest, is I'm going to have a drop on the bottom down this edge. And then that should hopefully tell me a lot about my peg. Now, if I drop on the bottom and have a good run on the bottom, see, just a little sign there. If I have a good run on the bottom, that might tell me that the fish do actually, a lot of the fish do actually want to be down today. Now, it's not actually a really warm day this. Especially when that wind's blowing down. It does actually feel a little bit chilly, so it might be you know, a few fish just wanting to feed off the bottom today. So we'll just see. Keep throwing a few casters in. Lift and drop me float. Just keep somewhere on the move every now and again slap me rig over make a bit of noise it's interesting I've dropped back in on this line just shortly before we started filming and I caught three quite quick this seems to be how this edge is where you go in and catch a couple and then it just fades so what I'm going to do, instead of just sitting there, I'm going to come back and make a positive change. So 
I'm going to keep feeding that line to the pot, which has been stronger. I'm going to have a drop on the bottom down this edge. Now, I might go in and get line bites and foul luck and miss bites and well, catch the wrong fish. But at least that'll then tell me whether what I'm doing is right. So, pick me a drig up. Feeding casters. So, I'm just going to go in on casters on the hook. Just going to put two casters on. Now again, make sure you're keeping feeding all your other lines. Just lay me rig in, drop it down. a little sign straight away now this is what I'm looking for on this rig if I go in and get quite a few indications I know that the fish are sat off the bottom they don't want to be down on the bottom if I go in on this and catch nice and clean and I get proper bites then obviously that might be telling me that the fish want to be down on the bottom so wanted to have a drop in on this just so because I think it's going to tell me a lot about what I need to do with my match you know I'm doing okay at the minute I, you know halfway through I've got sort of 65 pound you know I, you know if they stay at this pace then I'll be on for 130 pound which I imagine will be a reasonable weight there you go there's a fish don't know if that's hooked right it seems to be shooting off quite quick So, see what that's doing. Just let it run. See, foul up fish. Now, fish are actually trying to jump out my net, just being careful of that. Now, if that keeps happening, it's going to be telling me a lot. It's actually broke me that. Maybe it wasn't foul up. Don't know what's happened there. Didn't seem to be loads and loads of pressure on the fish, so I'm not sure how that's managed to break me. Change me up length again. See what. Here's me not thinking I put the wrong hook length on. It's a three inch hook length on that reef. Again, two casters. Don't forget your other lines now. That's the key. I keep emphasising it, but it's so, so important. Keep feeding all your lines. If you stop feeding one of your lines, then it never has the chance of ever coming back strong. Whereas, as long as you keep putting bait in, you've always got the chance of it coming on really, really strong. Don't just expect to go in and if a line's not producing, you know, it's not going to work. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time building it up. Keep feeding it. See there, threw some casters in. I had a liner on my float. This is what I'm looking for. These indications to tell me that the bulk of the fish that are down there are up in the water. Just missed a little bite then. Getting your rig back in. Perch. So I think, I'm going to have it one more go, but I think this is telling me straight away. I do think that last fish was foul upped. It's telling me straight away now that what I was doing, fishing shallow and rotating my lines, probably is the right thing to do. One more look on this, and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to nip back out. 
on my long line. So again, just lay that rig in. Loose feed a few casters. Now I want to feed over the top of my float because I want to see indications. Now again, I've fed there and I've had a liner on my float. Them fish are coming up. It's telling me that straight away. What I probably just need to do, that's probably just one fish there milling about off the bottom. What I probably need to do is just get off it, keep feeding it and keep swapping. Seems like a day today where you can't just clatter them all down one line. You need to keep on the move. So, oh, there you go. Should I say that? I've actually just had a nice positive bite. Just check. I'm just going to check where he's hooked. Yeah, he is hooked in the mouth. Oh no, he's not, he's just under the chin. So I'm actually thinking, yeah, definitely feel like them fish are off the bottom. It's worth just having that rig there, just because it allows me to check that. Now, without that there, I wouldn't know if there was any fish on the bottom or not. I'm just gonna, literally just gonna have one more go. And then I'll probably nip back out shallow to the pot. Draw me rig into the edge. Drop it in. Again, immediately I'm looking for signs and liners on my float. Stuff to tell me where the fish want to be. If I throw bait over my float and I don't get any indications, don't get any liners, it just sits there. It tells me the fish are probably on the bottom. So again, though, I've got a liner. So, having a bit of a tougher spell of my match now, like, that's the thing, but I'm just trying to make sure, even in these tougher spells of the match, I am putting something in the net. I think that's really important. Right, perch. I've made the decision. I need to be fishing shallow. So, I'm going to pop this one back. And I think I'm going to get back out on that pot. So, I'm just going to pick me 12 inch overshotted rig up. Keep feeding that edge because I've had a few signs down there. I do think they will come back there positively shallow. For the meanwhile, I'm just going to rotate my swim. So, I'm going to get back on that pot. Push that overshotted rig in. Hopefully a little bit of a reed that's in the way. Just have to come just a little bit shorter. Again, just keep lifting and dropping that rig. Now when they seem to be there, the fish seem to get a quick bite, you'll go in and get one pretty fast. So this will tell me now whether a few fish have gathered back up. Gonna pull that reed out the way if I can. Get this reed just seems to be getting in the way. There you go, just out the way. And just get me rig now, nice and tight to the bank, where I feel like them F ones are sat. We'll say that I've just hooked it. Just gonna try and just just, just gonna try and just drag it out the way if I can. There you go. Right. So it's out of the way. Right, so I'm back in. Feed, lift, lower it down, lift. 
Now, it's, I've had two good spells on this where I've caught really, really fast. And when they've been there, you seem to go in, within a couple of lifts, you, you will get a bite, so. Maybe it's gonna be a case of going back down me, me right hand edge and just giving me shallow lines a bit of time just to build up strong. Now, if you just keep thinning them out all the time, eventually, there's not loads and loads of them there. It'll never really get going strong, so. It might just be a case of just nipping back down that edge. What I think I'll do, just plug away for a little bit and then we might have to have a catch up when I found a few fish again because at the minute it's gone a little bit difficult. I feel like it's a very 120 to 140-ish sort of. See another car just shoot out my peg. Look, look, look. That is a car. Yeah, is it? Are we on? Right. So, interestingly, last time I was on, I said to you, oh, this is going for a run. Feels like a car. Yeah, but interestingly, last time I spoke to you, I said to you that I was going to go back out shallower on the pot, and I went out and caught one F1 and no more bites. So, that's really interesting. Like, I really expected to go back there and have a good run. So, as I said to you, I was going to have a go back in this right edge. I'd been feeding it all day with micro pellets. And I felt to myself that now was the time to have a drop back in because none of my other lines were showing themselves as being, you know, that like they were going to come strong. So I've gone back in on this edge. I've had a couple of stockies, an F1, and this is my first carp. Now, I expected to catch a few carp down here today. So it's probably four pound, not a bad fish. Now. If I can catch these, then obviously I don't need to be catching really fast. Now, my F1s I've had today, I've had some big F1s, but I've had a lot of stockies mixed in, so I feel like I need quite a lot of fish with them stockies, whereas if I can catch them, I've actually seen a carp bow wave out as well. So obviously a few carp starting to come in my peg. If I can catch them carp, then I don't need, like I say, loads and loads of fish to catch a good weight. Now, I've probably got, I'm going to say 75 pound is going to be my guess of what I reckon I've got. I've got, yeah, 75 to 80 pound. So, not too bad. We're about two hours to go. But I feel like I almost probably are going to need to catch the same again in the last two hours if I'm going to do any good in this match today. Maybe even more, maybe obviously this lake might not be strong enough to compete in the overall match today. Or maybe I'm just fishing for my lake. Don't know. There's one. Stocky again. Now, one other option I've got here on this peg, just on a top kit, it's actually even shallower. Might have just foul up that. Yeah, it's actually even shallower on a top kit here. So literally just at the side of me, box here there's a spot where I've probably only got this is two foot of water it's probably only 16 inches there now I know it's very close to myself but if them carp want to come in they might want to come in and feed in shallower water this might be a little bit too deep for them and it also by coming into shallower water I might start to cut out the amount of stockies that I'm catching you tend to find because the fish are small the stockies they don't like going into the shallower water because I feel like they feel like they're in danger of predators and, you know, stuff like cormorants and herons and stuff that they might be scared of. Whereas them bigger fish don't mind coming in that shallower water. So to cancel out these stockies and try and target the carp, 
might be a case of just coming into that shallower water now. Just got to see, I'm going to have a few more feeds on this because I've not long caught a carp. You actually see a little fish swirl there then. This is where, if this is happening, I'm getting swirls and I feel like I'm not catching the right fish. It might be a case of just coming back. I might have to wait a little bit longer for an indication, but then when I get one, it should hopefully be a quality fish. So that's what's going through my head at the minute. sitting keep everything tight over that little pile of bait what I fed see there's a little liner again maybe I need to come onto that shallow a bit I need to find a line now where I feel like I can catch a big weight of fish quick and at the minute I haven't got that now if I if I end up ticking along till the end I'm still putting fish in my net I'll still have a reasonable weight and hopefully do okay but you know, in order to sort of push my weight up and catch a, you know, a match winning weight or a, you know, a framing weight, I'm probably going to have to catch somewhere else or faster or bigger fish. So this is what I need to try and work out now. As we're coming into them last couple of hours, it's going to be really important to, to find a line to, to catch quick on before the end. So there's one. There's an, that's actually another decent fish. So... Just going to plod away with this for just a couple more chucks. And if I just feel like I could catch them on that shorter line in that shallower water, I am going to just come back, start fishing there. Now, don't be afraid of doing this in match situations. So, you know, if you're getting a few bites on a line and you think, don't really want to come back, you know, in case I don't catch there. If them, if them fish there are very close to this other line, so... If I just come back to there and feed, if them fish that are sat a little bit further down should hopefully just come straight in there. And if not, I'm not going to feed loads and loads of bait. I'm just going to feed in my little cab pot. No harm done. I can always go back to my original spot. So just try these things. Obviously, depth of water, massive important thing when you're fishing for F1s and carp and just, you know, fishing commercial venues. It's really, really important. One of the most important factors. So have another drop in here keep firing that shallow line because you never know with a flick of a switch one of my shallow lines could just literally kick in and I'll get a bite of chuck till the end something's bound to come good at some stage see there's a liner of a fish there as I just go to put my rig in so I actually do feel like well there you go that was a quick bite I actually do feel like they are coming in and wanting to be in shallower water, but that was a clean bite, so I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to rush it. This could be a, you know, a big F1 again, or maybe a little car. This is good now. I feel like I've got something to work from with this edge. Some reasonable fish coming in, there's some signs of him. No, a big F1. So, I'm just going to keep doing this, and maybe if I feel like I've got the option, and it's a good option, I'm going to come back a little bit closer and try and catch them even better. that little trapper bait get me rig on it so important when you're doing this sort of fishing just make sure your traps set get everything tight hold your rig nice and still over that bait can be so tempting when you're doing this sort of fishing to rush, you know, just drop in, feed your bait any old way. And then all that seems to happen is your peg gets messy, your bite slow down. Just make sure every time you're feeding accurately. 
getting your rig right over your bait. See a little swirl there. Again, I feel like that fish is off the bottom. Now, we'll see on a liner. See, my peg is getting on for two foot deep there. So to see a swirl, that fish will not be on the bottom. So this is what's making me think of coming back a bit closer. You've got to be careful though of not cutting your bites out. Like coming back into shallower water when you're getting a lot of liners or you know missing a few bites. Sounds a great idea and you you know you would think to do it straight away, but sometimes you come back and then all of a sudden your bites completely dry up to nothing. So it's important not to you know just rush into these things. Make sure give it a bit of time and then make that decision. I'm gonna keep throwing me shallow lines, cutting me over shallow line. Speed me micros. Get me rig right over it, nice and quick. You wanna get your rig set as fast as possible. These fish, especially when there's a few, see how quick that bite was? Missed it again. See how quick the fish can come into your peg? If you waste too much time getting your rig down, You don't catch the fish, the fish are in your peg, they've at your bait and they're gone. Another swirl there. I definitely feel like I need to come onto that shallower water. So I'm going to have one more chuck and what I'm going to do, I think if I don't catch one nice and clean I'm going to come back closer and I'll catch up with you again hopefully when I've got that going. Right, I know I'm interrupting your video, just give me 10 seconds, I've got something exciting to tell you about. So we've got channel memberships on YouTube, two different packages, loads of exclusive content with star anglers like Christian Jones, Jordan Holloway, just to name a few. So get down into the description below, click the link, go to the join section and check it out because you're not going to regret it. Right, I'm off, enjoy. Right, so I've made that change that I said I was thinking about making now, and that is to come back onto that shallower little spot. And it's worked really, really well. So obviously I was catching a few a little bit further down my peg, but the problem I was having is I was having fish sat in my peg and they were sitting off the bottom and I was catching stockies. And I just, it just felt too deep to ever have a really good finish to the match. Now, come back just on a short kit and it's probably six inches shallower. Now, since I've made that change, I've caught a big car I've gone in again, I've caught a big F1, three pound. I did actually lose a ghosty that I might have fouled up to be fair. And he just shot off. But definitely may have been a positive change. There you go. And the fish that I'm catching are the bigger fish. Now, it's really important this, and this is where I stress to you about depth of water. Quite an angry one again. Hopefully that's a carp again. Where I stress you about depth of water, obviously, if you're fishing in, and it's a big F1, if you're fishing in too deep a water, you won't catch the correct fish. Fishing in too shallow water, the fish won't come in, so it's getting that depth correct. Now, obviously, as the days progressed and a few bigger fish have started to come in the peg, then bigger fish have wanted to come into shallower water. So now, bringing it back where I've got that little bit less depth, it's working really well. So weight wise, I reckon I've got 90 pound and there is an hour and a half to go. So if I can keep catching down here, I reckon I could actually end up with a reasonable weight because it's quick, the decent fish. I'm bound to catch a couple more carp before the end. I feel like they're definitely gonna start to come in. Later on we get, oh, a little bite straight away. The later on we get, should be more of the carp coming in. So I'm positive that I can catch a decent weight now. So just need to make the most of this last little spell. So because the edge is working well down here, because I'm trying to concentrate on my lines, I'm trying to think what's my best chance now of doing well. I think that's fishing in both edges. So I've made the decision. I've stopped feeding my line on the pot. Obviously it's difficult now to really settle if I keep feeding three lines and I have to choose what do I believe is going to be the best couple of lines to fish and I think that's 
down this edge and, and also fishing shallow down that left edge so fish coming in there now what I might just have to do after I miss that bite is just come back and set me trap what I'm going to do I'm just going to come back back shot's actually slid up a little bit as well so just make sure that back shot's down Keep feeding with left hand edge aggressively with casters. There's one in my peg there now. So literally, I'm just gonna feed. Again, don't rush everything, even though you can see the fish tailing. Just feed your bait nice and accurately. You get your rig on it, and there you go. You can see how quick. Fill oh. me up length again. What's that all about? I think there's a snag. I don't think it's the elastic because the, the line's heavy enough. As if it's hitting something and just breaking me, do you know? Yeah, as it swims as it swims out my peg. No, because it's going too quick. Solid there now though. So setting me trap again feeding me micras there you go see how many are there now it's really going strong decent fish as well something you might also have noticed is it's actually changed me elastic i've also stepped up now to black hydro now I have actually had a couple of hook lengths where I've hooked the fish and the fish have swam off and actually I think they've actually like grazed my line against something. Now obviously just fishing a little bit of every gear, I've just upped my hook length, fishing 015 engage now. And again like black hydro, it's just allowing me hopefully to pull the fish away before they have a chance to snag me up, you know, take me to the snag, so hopefully that's going to help but I've had a good arrival of fish down this edge here now there's definitely a lot of better fish coming in catching them nice and close to myself so I could be able to catch a big weight if it keeps going under obviously in an ideal world this depth what I've got here would be a little bit further down my peg where I could hopefully you know keep them there for longer but obviously on this peg today, my shallow water is really close to me. So that's where the fish want to be. Sometimes that's where you have to fish. It might just take a little bit longer for a fish to come in at times. But it seems like when there is one there, it's going nice and quick. There you go. It's taking me around the corner. No comment on that one. Okay. Right, so you might have just seen by that last uh, fish where it took me around the corner, I was talking about the fish taking me into a snag. That one didn't actually snag me up. It just ran me past the tree and obviously didn't have a chance to get sections on or, you know, think about getting sections on. So what I might have to do now is really try and take charge of the fish now them fish are going to try and run away from me at that time I sort of let it run I think I'm just going to have to get hook it pull it straight round and try and bring it back towards me can't afford to be losing them sorts of fish like that felt like a car at that time now especially now see I just need to try and bring it keep a bit of pressure on it bring the fish round as long as they stay away from that snag once they're on the way back here now I shouldn't have a problem see how many fish have turned up down there now feels like another cart this just keep me pole low he's trying to run away
changing my elastic. I can't. It's. I'm pulling out. A two, I've just lost. Should have 110 now, really, with what I've lost. 110 to 120, really. We've got, got two nets clipped at 45, so they probably go much closer to a ton. But I've lost that, you know, them couple of carp and stuff. They're frustrating. So I just don't see why I've lost them. Like, them, that, that one that's just slipped the hook, it must just be a little bit too much pressure with that black hydro. Do you know what I mean? Maybe I'm better just fishing this grey and just taking my time with everything. But the nice thing is everything that's coming in, I'm catching easy enough now. It's going under, they're lovely and clean. I'm not having any messing about, it's just going clunk. You know, sometimes you can see them tailing, but it won't go under. I'm not having that issue. need a real good spell now. Just say that and I just had one. Lining me out. Problem with expanders in it's every time you miss a bite or anything you've got to some great fish coming in. Great fish. Oh, I shouldn't have said anything. I proper jinxed myself there. I need to compose myself. Loads of them in. Yeah, it's ridiculous. There's tails everywhere. It's weird, I was fishing 013 in grey hydra and not losing anything. I swapped to 015 in black and everything I just started losing everything. It's mad. Softer. Yeah, but the other the other day I was fishing that black and just hooking them and just swimming them in, lovely, pull it, net it. No. Yeah, there's one now. Come on. Come on, you b Like that trying to jump out now. They're all at it, Tom. They're all at it. Yeah. I'm amazed that's never really got going. Well, shallow hasn't in general. Maybe I should have just fished this right edge all day. Mm. It's, got, it's got a bit sidetracked by the fact that I was getting a few shallow. No. Oh. Come in a few at the start, didn't they? Maybe I would have just caught steady and then just had a good run at the end like this now. Don't know. So, to be honest, there's a lot of fish coming in down the edge now, but I've had a bit of a bad period, to be honest. I went a little bit, I think, too heavy on the elastic. When I swapped up to that black hydro, thinking, 
obviously them fish have started to come in and there's a lot of fish there and they're decent fish and just try and make hay while the sun shines sort of thing. The problem I've had is I've start, I pulled out of a few fish, I actually lost two carp. Now, I feel like, you know, it's potentially was a bad move and I might have, you know, cost myself sort of 10 to 12 pound of fish, maybe in 15 pound of fish in that little spell where I probably should have just stuck with grey. And I probably would have landed the fish, so a bit of a mistake. But I've swapped back now. I'm on I'm fishing grey. I've caught another couple of fish. I've just had a carp. I've had a big F1. So I'm going to plug away with this for now. Like I say, I've, I've stopped fishing to me, the you know, the plant pot. I'm just fishing the edge, just here with micros. And the left edge with casters. And what I'm going to do shortly, unless this keeps going under really regularly and I'm catching them easily, is have a go in that left edge and see if there's a few turned up. Because if I can catch them there shallow, I can catch them real quick and real consistently. Now, if not, I'll just come back on this line, sit and be patient, and catch these better stamp fish. There's one there tailing up now, there you go. So, hopefully, I've probably got around £100 now. So, probably should have been, truthfully, I should have been on 120 now. I know that. I definitely should have got them fish in that I lost. And it's my own fault. I tried to go a bit too quick and I tried to step everything up too much. So, calm myself down just make sure everything ends up in the net so again two pounder two two and a half pounder good stamp fish i'm on my third net now now got seven pound in my third net so i think i've probably got between 90 and 95 split between my first two nets so probably got a hundred to 105 pound now so I'm doing okay. I've got an hour and ten minutes to go. So just hopefully I'll keep catching for this last spell. And end up with a good weight. I'm just potting micros in still. That definitely seems to be right today. Now, if the fish aren't coming in your peg feeding micros, then ground bait's obviously the next step. Gets more fish in your peg, but there's plenty of fish coming in on micros. All that I'd do by starting to feed ground bait is make everything even more messy. You don't need it. Normally they are slightly easy to catch if you can catch feeding with micros. There's one there now. Just be nice and patient. Oh, it's just spooked now. When they spook like that, don't just sit there. If you feel like your trap's been disturbed, the fish have gone, just come back, fill your pot up, reset your trap. So again, feed them micros, get me rig on it, and hopefully a fish should come straight back to that little bit of bait what you fed in that little trap and you can catch it. Stole everything over me, bait. actually see all these fish coming in and tailing today really tempting again just to and I think it's happened to me a little bit is to you know rush things try and you know try and land everything really quick and stuff and I just needed to make every fish count because they're decent fish they're coming in regularly you know feed everything nice and accurate be nice and patient wait for that proper bite Seems like when one does come in, as long as you've got your bait right over that bait that you've fed, you've got a really good chance of just nailing it quite quick. So, 
there's one there now so just keep everything right over that bait just wait for what may go so hopefully now I'm starting to have a bit of a run keep catching there till the end or maybe even have a real good run on that shallow line then you never know I might be in with a shout or doing okay so keep going shame about them lost carp but it shows it happens can't let it worry you too much you've got to just keep plugging away try and correct you know obviously the mistakes what I made in terms of going a little bit too heavy on the elastic and just catch the fish that are there so probably gonna try and catch one more now and then we'll do a final little sort of last 20 minutes last half an hour of the match before we're finished hopefully we'll have a really good end here now One thing I've noticed here now is I had a spell where the fish were coming in really regularly and even though I'm still catching there's not as many coming in so again what might be a case of doing is just slightly upping my feed so maybe a slightly bigger pot maybe even adding some ground bait and fishing a bit of a 50-50 mix might be good if them fish do stop coming in that might be what I need to do just to drag some more fish in the peg obviously they were coming in initially but now I've gone in and caught a few of them I'm just thinned them out a little bit I might just need a bit of smell from the ground bait just to drag them fish in the peg but I'll just see how I get on this chuck Keep everything nice and tight. It seems like all of a sudden, you sat there waiting for a bite. All of a sudden, one will come in. You'll see a big orange tail, and then you'll get a bite. So, don't panic too much. Don't rush too much. Just be nice and patient. It's been uh, quite a strange day today. I haven't felt like I've worked out exactly what's going to be best it's been i always felt like i was going to have a really good run shallow and it's just not really happened so maybe it was a case of i should have been fishing a little bit longer down the edge and being patient but maybe it's also just a time of day thing now i'm getting a few bites in the edge so it might not necessarily be that something i've done wrong it might just be being a bit critical of my own performance today but I don't know I do feel like there was a little bit more to catch today if I'd got it spot on so right so I've not had a sign there so just for one chuck just to see what difference it makes I can always swap back to micros just going to create a bit of a 50 50 mix so if I just don't know where I'm going to put these going to tip them few micros out just so I've got a spare bait tub got a few more micros in this next tub there so I'm just going to put two handfuls of ground bait two handfuls of micro pellets mix them together put four white maggots on the hook Just have a go feeding ground bait now like i say when there's already some fish there feeding ground bait might make it a bit messy but now 
there's actually not as many fish there, so I might just need to draw these fish back in. So we'll see what response we get on this. If I don't get a response to this, it might just literally be a case that I just need to rest me swim. So I'll probably just feed it, have a go in the left edge, and then come back in and hopefully get a little good spell at the end. I'm not actually seeing any indications of fish coming in now. It's amazing how, you know, about 20 minutes ago, there was lots of fish coming in. They were coming in regular. I could see tails. I could see you know, fish coming in along the bank. Now, literally seems like there's no fish there at all. So, little perch. Right, need to start feeding my line more aggressively to try and drag the fish back in. So what I'm gonna do, just plop that back in. I'm going to feed a bit of bait, I'm going to come off it and hopefully drop back in and have a good run when them fish have come back in. So, catch up with you, that last little spell before we finish fishing. Hopefully some fish have turned up. Right, so it's the final 20 minutes and I've got about 120 pound now I feel like I should be on a little bit more than that I feel like really with what I've had on the hook when I had that little spell where I lost a few fish I should have definitely been close to 140 pound now obviously if I end up close to the framing weight I'll be a little bit disappointed but it's one of them things you know you sometimes get little things wrong like I should definitely shouldn't have swapped me elastic I should have just kept catching them like I was but it's not a problem now with about an hour to go this edge line sort of just started to fade a little bit as you've seen as um just tried swapping to ground bait and that didn't tend to seem to work so what I made the decision to do is just have a look in that left edge on my caster line and I caught four or five f1s really quick for here we go a bit like how, as it's been the most of the day on all my swims to be honest just as a line starts to kick off it's then faded there again so swap back to this edge managed to catch a carp three or four big f1s that's a big f1 there now and i've just plodded really it's even though there's an odd fish coming in it's never gone solid where I felt like on enemy lines where I feel like I could catch a really big weight really quickly now maybe potentially it's not fished unbelievably well I don't I really don't know because I say I can't see many other anglers on this peg it's a nice big f1 again though that's you know, sort of three pound so I've just plodded I'm going to just think I'm going to just plod on this edge till the end Try and keep putting a decent fish in my net. I'm still just flicking a few casters in that other edge because I know, if needs be, I should be able to go in and get a good little spell because it's been like that for most of the day. Every time I've rested it, I've gone in and caught three or four, five F1s. Now, it could even be worth, depending on how many fish are coming in this edge now. Just wrap the float up a little bit there. There you go. Depending on how many fish are coming in this edge now, it could even be worth trying to take a bit of a gamble on going back shallow in that other edge. Now, there is exactly 20 minutes left now. Just check me clock, and I think if I do gamble on that other edge, I could easily go in and catch five or six F1s. Whereas down here, I feel like probably limited to the number of fish. Now, if there was a lot of carp coming in here, I'd probably stay on it but you know my last seven or eight fish that I've hooked down there only one of them has been carp so don't feel like there's loads of carp in my peg now I 
feel like and probably likely to sort of just nick an odd more of decent F1 till the end. So maybe it's worth taking a gamble on shallow, but there's one just spooked out my peg there. Going to refeed. Yeah, it might be worth taking a little gamble on shallow, so just feed that edge again. I feel like it. If I stay down here now, I'll probably have somewhere between 130 and 140 pound by the end. I feel like maybe I could gamble down that other edge and get closer to 150. This is what's going through my mind at the minute, so. I'm just gonna see. See what happens this chuck. Just wish, because the fish definitely do want to come in and feed in the shallow water today. I just wish that it was a little bit further down my peg. I think if I had this depth, you know, on a top kit and one, top kit and two, I think I would have carried on catching real consistently till the end from when they first started wanting to come in the shallow water. I think the problem here is you get one come in, you get a couple come in, and then they spook like that's just spooked off then again. It's just a little bit frustrating, but it's what it is only do with what you know your peg gives you obviously in terms of the depth of water now still been good i've still had a lovely days fishing as you always seem to get a tunnel like so many fish in this venue you always seem to get a few bites i've had a few carp which has been nice nice to see a few fish tailing up in the edge as well but i do think i, I haven't quite done the peg justice what I should have done today so I'm going to give it this last chuck there's one there now see again it's spooked out my peg so they're just getting that little bit crafty now them last three have come in and just as they've got up that ledge into that shallow water they've just turned themselves back round and that wasn't happening earlier so can tell there's not as many coming in they're not got that same confidence of feeding sort of feel like i'm almost just eking my peg out here now and you think you know going into this last 20 minutes it'd have been really good there'd been a lot of fish there and it's just not seemed to happen but obviously the weigh-in is going to tell us a lot about the day obviously if there's been a lot of good weights and it's fished well in other areas of the, the venue and on this lake then it might tell me that I have maybe made a bit of a mistake with my match but if not and we've done reasonably well on the lake then oh, see it isn't quite right that I'm just going to rest it and I'm going to have I'm going to take that gamble and I'm going to have a look down the edge yeah shallow right so just gone straight back in down that edge and like how it's been the rest of the day you rest the line you drop on the other you get an instant bite or an instant response hopefully now i'll keep catching There's probably just over 15 minutes left hopefully now i'll just carry on catching this last little spell you know maybe fill this net and then like i say, i might be closer to 150 pound which you never know it could be a good weight on the day like i expect obviously the weights to be big today it's been fishing really well but you just never know it's a little bit cooler today so just keep even though i'm fishing down that other edge don't forget to feed your other line i might need that going into that last 10 minutes i might be able to go back in down that other edge catch you know two big cart right at the depth you just never can give up on your lines like I know I stopped feeding my line out to the pot today, but that was just purely to allow me to concentrate on these two swims and be able to feed them well. So, just flip me rig in. Seems today like slapping the rigging down this edge has been really, really important. Almost as if there's just an odd fish sitting tight in that cover and you just have to slap your rig over, make that little bit of noise to try and draw a fish out to your hook bait. I think if there's a lot of fish there and you've got them settled at a depth and the ca you're catching them well, you can sort of just pull your rig in, lift and drop it, like as I normally do. 
don't normally like to constantly slap my rig over, but today seems like most of my bites down this edge have been on the slap, so just sit it there for a couple of seconds and now again just gonna slap my rig back over and get it falling back through, make a bit of noise. See as I had a bite straight away again on the slap and just missed it. Chucking a few casters. Oh, missed it again. Amazing how, you know, you just rest at this one of your lines where you literally can't get any bites on it, you know, 20 minutes earlier and then you go back in and you're getting signs and indications straight away. lift and drop try and keep enticing that bite can't just sit there gotta just keep trying to make something happen so again feed this doesn't go and if I don't hook one again within a couple of minutes I am going to have to switch off and go back down the other side don't want to completely waste this last little spell but then I also don't want to rush it and then not end up putting anything in the net so been a bit of a funny end to the match it's never got going like I expected it to I really thought one of my swims would come absolutely solid and it's just not so got that one straight away typical of the day I've gone back in I've missed you know a bite or two and then that's it back down to no indications oh there's one just managed to moan one on Only a small stocky though. Put them in my net. Check the time. So there's 11 minutes left. So I'm going to give it one go now. Down this. I've one one more go down this edge, shall we? And if it if it isn't any good, and I don't catch one quite quick, I think I'll spend the last 10 minutes down that right and hopefully snare a car. Looking back in hindsight, I'm trying to think obviously maybe what I would have done differently on this peg today now. Something I said to Tom that I think maybe would have been a good move is if I had obviously set my box quite a way over to the left of my peg and just give myself a little bit more distance between me and my right hand edge where I fish quite close to myself and just fished in that shallow water, maybe... I would have caught, you know, quite a few more fish down that edge and caught there for most of the day in that shallow water. But in hindsight, you know, it's one of them things so hard to say. When I was looking at that edge at the start, when I plumbed it up, I felt like that two foot was going to be a good depth. Just as it's turned out, them fish I've wanted to be in the shallow water and haven't really settled well actually fishing shallow and feeding casters like I thought they would. But that's the thing with this sort of fishing. It's, you know, the decisions and what depth of water you're fishing and stuff like that's so, so important. So straight away, I can tell it's not enough bites there. It's not worth spending this last little spell there. I think I'm just going to spend that last 10 minutes back in that edge, try and catch a couple more decent fish, and we'll see how we end up. So I'm back in down that right edge, and I've got one. Again, the being quite frustrating down there, it's it's not like it was in the spell where I was getting bites regularly. They're coming in, 
Might be a little carp again. Carp are having half gone strong when you've up one today. Angry things, I tell you. But yeah, it's been a bit frustrating. I think as, as it's been thinned out a bit later in the match and you're just trying to eat fish out your peg, the problem what it is, when they're coming in in ones, it's been quite hard to catch. Like early in the session when there was a few fish down that edge, you seem to be able to go in and you'd get two or three fish there and they'd be catchable. Whereas when there's just one, it seems like they come in, spook out the peg very easily and quite hard to settle down. Try and take my time with this. I think it's a carp. It might just be a foul up F1. It seems it's fighting very quick and very strange. No, is a is a carp, little carp hooked in the mouth. Is a ghosty. Maybe that's why he's fighting a bit hard. They normally do fight a bit funny, them ghosties. Carp about three pounds. Put him in the net. I've got around a hundred and thirty pound on the clicker now. And I normally find I tend to slightly under click, so I'm hoping I'm closer to 140. If I can catch a couple more. This last little spell, and then he sort of six minutes maybe left five six minutes catch maybe a couple more cart you never know might just be able to get to around 150 but we'll see Trying to sit and be patient. There was a little indication there. Can't actually see a fish there, but I just had a bit of a sign on my float. Maybe there's an F1 in my peg. There's one, there's a little sign. There is an F1 there now. Hopefully he'll nail it. sit and be patient again I'm conscious that there's quite a bit of bait in my peg now oh I missed it again real crafty this last little spell of this match these have gone really funny on me in this edge frustrating because they're there there's a few there but just not give themselves away you set me trap again the problem like you need to feed to reset your trap but you've almost already got too much bait in your peg this is where obviously maybe for you know I'd a bit of a longer edge where I could get down a little bit further and the fish were coming in more readily and I would didn't have to sort of force them in this last little spell would have been able to carry on catching them steady whereas I feel like I've had to sort of feed a little bit more bait than I wanted to this last little spell to try and draw the fish back in. There's one. Decent F1. Two pounder. Anything goes well, what I think maybe I should have done now later in the session. It's something I should have maybe bought. If I knew what was going to happen in this match again, another thing what I feel like 
would have been good. Was a bit more of a standout hook bait now over this micro pellet line, what I'm feeding. So maybe a tin of corn. But if I'm honest, I'm not a massive fan of corn when you're targeting F1s. I think it'd be a little bit too heavy and he'd be struggled to suck it in cleanly. So I feel like maybe a piece of punch meat or something like that. A bit later in this session where they've been struggling to get him to take the bait, maybe just a bit more of a standout hook bait. That piece of meat might have been good, but it's all lifts and butts. Obviously, it's so hard to get everything dead right you know you're just trying to make your best decision there's only one minute left now so fish is actually just come in my peg and disturb me trap but i don't think i have time to reset my trap so I'm just gonna hold my rig hope that another one comes in it's been a good day's fishing though it's been an interesting day's fishing and hopefully it's made a bit of an interesting live match for you like i think if everything just went really easy all the time it might not be as interesting but see another one's just come in and spooked and there you go there's the all out now it's been an interesting day like i said i reckon i'm go i'm gonna have if i had to take a guess about 135 to 140 pound nice days fishing but you know you know not enough i don't think We'll see. Right, so we've weighed in and we've gone and had a look at the results and I've ended up second in the match. I've had £150. Now, looking at the rest of the lake, obviously we've been on extension today and only £87 was second on extension. So it'd be easy for me to sort of say that I feel like I'd fished a good match and you know I've done really well to catch what I've caught. But if I'm honest today, I've been on a really good peg. I've had a lot of room and I've had the fish there to catch a little bit more. I honestly believe I should have had sort of... 175 to 180 pounds would have been i think what i should have caught out of that peg you'll obviously seen that little spell where i did struggle to catch him and i also had problems with i had a little spell where i lost some fish as well so definitely could have caught enough 155 pounds won the match on peg four on house i think he's caught on pace so well done to him obviously we'll put some of the results up on the screen as well so you can see you know who's caught and on what pegs other than that, I think just looking back, I feel like I should have spent more time in that edge. I should have probably cut both edges out left and right. And instead of fishing shallow in the edge, I should have just fished left and right and feeding and fishing sort of micros or maybe ground bait as well and fish like that. But it's all in a hindsight thing. I still think I've fished a reasonable match, obviously, to catch £150. I've had a brilliant day's fishing. And uh, at the minute, there's a raffle going on here at Tunnel, you know, there's been prizes up for grabs there's been you know mystery pairs as well so it's been a brilliant day you know for a brilliant cause bit of charity behind it and also to remember mike's wife so brilliant day um just a shame i couldn't quite catch enough to win it on the day but hopefully you've enjoyed the match hopefully hopefully you've learned a few things and you've seen obviously that it doesn't always go to plan um but you know getting here to tunnel bar and i really love it here brilliant fishing i've had a good day so hope you enjoyed it <laughs>